Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalee is the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333. And before we get started, a couple things to point out. So, I'm sure you've noticed that I haven't been streaming as regularly as I normally do. Part of that is because last week was the post tournament week, and I normally don't stream the Tuesday of a week after the tournament. But also, I'm prepping for a move, so expect the stream schedule to be a little bit erratic for the next couple weeks, maybe three or four weeks at most. After that, it should be back to normal, but until then, it might be a little bit wonky. I always post if I am streaming on Twitter, which you can find in the description link and on the intermission screen, but I don't necessarily post if I'm not going to be streaming. So normally I will, but if I miss it, then there usually won't be a Twitter post. But yeah, just so you know, that's the thing. I'm kind of in a bit of an erratic schedule right now. Anyway, that aside... Let's get to the game itself. So, we have Clone versus 400 on Titan Duel, which pretty typical map for vehicle play. Pretty decently built map. You got corner starts, and everyone wants to go to the next corners to get everything else, and usually map will split along corner to corner. However, with Clone playing, this will be interesting. Clone actually going for jump bots. So, Clone, for those not familiar, very defensive player, tends to be good at keeping units alive. 400, on the other hand, I can't think of anything super distinctive about their play offhand. Sorry, 400. I I know they're a solid player. I just don't think there's any particular thing that's super distinctive. Anyway, right now they're going for what well, looks like a Scorcher dive, actually. Four Scorchers right off the bat. They appear to be trying to kill Clone's commander. Immediately. Normally you'd go for the Dart. Like Dart followed by Scorcher followed by Mason. But no, this is pure aggression. And four Scorchers, that's enough to kill a commander. So 400 going for the comm kill. Clone, on the other hand, went for an early constable and going for a few early puppies. So this is more of a typical long game start. Clone likes playing the long game, and so that's what we're going to see. Clone playing the long game and building up everything they need just with early workers. At this point, I'm actually building a whole lot of military. This is going to be really easy for 400 to get into. Clone's commander is the only thing that's going to actually stop these scorchers from doing anything, and that commander, economy commander, Bob the Shop, is going to be beam laser. So it's not going to be... Yeah, it definitely still is beam laser. It doesn't have to be. I mean, dynamic commanders means it doesn't have to be. But Clone generally uses a la beam laser with their economy commander. And this is no exception. Puppy coming in here that should be able to take care of one of the Scorchers. Oh! It does not... Oh, wow. That's kind of lucky. Clone actually got pretty fortunate there. Their commander was just out of the way. And the Scorcher... One of the Scorchers got killed by the metal extractor blowing up. Because it was like at 1 HP or something. Because puppies apparently just barely don't kill Scorchers. Yeah, 410 damage to a unit with 420 health. That makes sense. But still, wow, that was close. Like if that Scorcher had survived, had not been so close to the Metal Extractor and gotten blown up, it might have had a chance to get close, but it probably wouldn't have killed anything. I mean, to be fair, Beam Laser on a Commander is not something that's trivial to deal with. Still... Good try, did a bit of damage. 400, unfortunately, didn't really expand a whole lot behind that. I did point out they didn't build any workers behind that. They had no masons or anything. So this is it. They're going for a heavy leveler. Basically just want to go for an assault push. Not even go for a huge amount of economy, just an assault push. And at this rate, it'll probably take them about five minutes to build all the levelers they need, which is a massive amount of time. By that point, Clone should have their entire side of the map. Like, everything from here to here. Just along here. Clone will have that by the time the levelers are done. So most likely there'll be two or three levelers before an assault actually happens. Because 400 is not going to be able to build all 10 in any reasonable amount of time. Yeah, like each one's taking... Okay, now not even bothering. That makes sense. Alright, so 400 being a bit more sensible. Switching over to the long game strategy. Not going to try to go for a big push. Because there's no economically feasible way they're going to do that. And they know it. So smart switch there. I mean, 400 is expanding on their own, so at least they're not being totally married. They weren't totally married to the aggression at the time. But yeah, definitely now they're they're going to be trying to play the long game. So we are going to see a bit of a longer game. Clone losing a few puppies to a leveler, tanking them all. Kind of makes sense. At this point, Clone going for the moderators, which is a good idea. I mean, I don't know if they know the levelers were there. I don't think they did before, but... Still, very good idea. Even if it wasn't, wasn't levelers, moderators would still be quite effective. Just dealing with stuff at long range. The fact that they're... I mean... 
I guess monitors just hit anything. But yeah, dealing with stuff at long range is generally a good idea. Although, levelers are really the main thing it would counter. Everything else would outpace moderators quite a lot. So it's fortunate for Clone that 400 did go heavy on the levelers. And at this point, Clone continuing to go for the moderators against slashers, which will be coming in next. Which outranged the moderators by about 150, yeah, 150 Elmos. Moderators, I believe, have 450 range. 420 range? Oh, no, 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 even more than that. So yeah, one and a half times the range, roughly. That will pretty much put a stop to Clone's defensive plans. I mean, as far as the leveler goes, it's not a bad idea, but still. Clone is kind of having a hard time keeping things military. They're clearly trying to go for as little military as possible, while 400, on the other hand, is trying to go as little economy as possible. So it's really going to come down to timing. Like, if 400 manages to get their economy up with three mace, no, two masons and a, and a, and a commander, so three builders. No, 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 it's three masons. So three masons and their commander, building up their economy, and that's it. While Clone, what do they have? I only saw one constable. Oh, they have three constables. Okay. And a switch to a heavy tank factory coming up in a quick minute or so. Maybe? Yeah, probably about a minute. So 400, definitely a bit better suited for an aggressive push, except they're kind of being defensive too, going heavy on slashers, not really very heavy on anything else. So 400 right now is probably just going to be hanging around. Both players really just hanging around. They're waiting until their armies are big enough to be able to do something. Because, I mean, 400 can kind of deal with the moderators, but the moderators, because they deal 500 damage. So neither one can really kill the other super effectively. Oh, does 400 know? No, that's not 400. There we go. That's 400. Yeah, the moderators are going to get some shots off. Actually, the moderators have a bit of an advantage just because they can move while shooting. Like, the slashes outrange them, but don't really outdamage them. So the moderators, they should be fine. Don't actually... Never mind. They've got more of an assault force than I was giving them credit for. My mistake. Although, at the same time, 400 is getting the southwest corner of the map. Does have a decent amount of defenses up, too. None of them are really going to be able to deal with a moderator's range, but still. So maybe... Okay, never mind. The defenders kind of can. The northeast will be contested. The southwest is pretty solidly 400s at this point. And 400, a little bit behind economically, though. Plun has taken more of what's going on inside their base. They've taken more metal extractors, it looks like, inside their base. Although, on the other hand, a lot of the more middle contested metal extractors 400 has taken, so... Must have just been reclaimed. I... Yeah, it looks like it was just reclaimed. Never mind. That makes a lot more sense, because Plun does not... Okay, hang on. we got to look at this for a sec. So, statically... They're about the same. Clone's overdrive is the difference maker. Okay. That's... Thank you, Google Frog, for putting these in there months ago. The overdrive and the reclaim thing here. Because that makes it a lot easier to know exactly what's going on. Anyway. We have... Heavy Tank Factory getting finished. Why is it not showing me what, what people are building? Okay, that's weird. Anyway, Heavy Tank Factory up with Reapers coming in. So Clone... Looks like they're going to try to assault everything here. They do have a bit of a northeast presence, but not much. The Reapers, are they going to go for the northeast? I think they probably will. I mean, if they manage to break that down, 400 doesn't have much. Their southwest is pretty open. I mean, they have the southwest corner, but their actual southwest area of their base, that's got no defenses. This is a giant corridor that pretty much anything can walk through. So it looks like the Reapers are going to try to bust down the other side because, hey, they can. And then that'll open up the entire base. 400 accessing a little bit, which is not what they want to do right now. No caretakers near their base at all. A few masons near their base, but nothing pushing their factory. And the heavy tank factory with four, well, three caretakers on top of the factory. So that's 40 metal per second going into that heavy tank factory. So this will probably turn things around. Just the sheer amount of units Clone is going to be building up with 400 not really pushing a lot into their factories. If their factories only making 10, or only pushing 10 metal per second. It's really not much it can do. I mean, another two or three Reapers, which will be another 30 seconds. Yeah, that's going to be it. 400's really got to push more metal into their factory. I don't think they realize they're accessing right now. Because that's the thing about economic advantages. They only work so well. They only work as well as you have the production to actually make that metal work for you. 
Otherwise, you're kind of hooped. And where are the Reapers? Okay, there's two Reapers right there. Third Reaper coming up. Fourth Reaper under production, which should take another probably 15 seconds to be done. I mean, check. Yeah, 10 seconds left to be done. So right now, 400 with a territory advantage, the economic advantage, but the production and military disadvantage, and this is probably going to be their last stand. I know it sounds weird, they have, they have the territory, but yeah, this assault here is pretty much 400's shot at taking Clone down before Clone is able to completely overwhelm 400 with the sheer number of units and power of their units, because Reapers are scary powerful. And I don't know if this is going to work. I really don't. It doesn't look like it will. The defenders... Ah, the defenders and reapers, thanks to the constable in particular, slowing that slowing that scorcher down. Keeping him from doing a whole lot of damage. So, that's pretty much it, I think. Clone's going to do a counterattack. They're going to crack back with all these reapers, and that should completely destroy 400. I mean, if 400 actually... Oh, they're building up a shield factory? Really? I guess they're going to go for racketeers. That, that would make sense. If they don't go for racketeers, I don't know why they went for the shield factory, but if they go for racketeers... Then obviously they're trying to stop the Reapers, and that makes perfect sense. However, the problem is that those Masons weren't really helping out before. Like, it would almost just do more damage just to have those Masons go help out, well, build a couple of caretakers, and then help out the factory first. The Reapers tearing apart the Southwest, because what's going to stop them at this point? They're Reapers. We got like, yes, 7,000 health, and deal, I think, 1,000, no, 640 damage a shot if both shells hit. And the moderators for extra support and slowing anything down that survives the moderator shot so the Reaper can hit it. I mean, the Northeast is still in play, and I think 400 might be building a factory there or something. They, they should build a couple of caretakers, build a factory, get some backup going there. No, going for roaches! I don't totally agree with this. I mean, I kind of agree with it because roaches are a lot of damage, but they're only 1,200 damage. Against most things, that's fine. Against Reapers, that's... Not a big deal, especially with moderator-supported Reapers. And this is what I mean. Once 400 lost that one attack going into Clone's base, trying to, trying to completely cripple Clone, Clone can just come in here with five or six Reapers and rip everything apart. 400 didn't have the production capacity to make that work. They didn't have enough units being built for that to make a difference. I mean, the Roaches that are being built are barely managing to deal with the Reapers. They aren't even dealing with the Reapers. They're being torn apart by the moderators. They're not even... Dan killing the Reapers, not even getting close to killing the Reapers. Like, one Reaper is one Roach shot away from death. But at this point, it's done. I mean, the Shieldbot Factory is under direct assault. That's it. That's game. And this is exactly what I meant. That was 400's only assault. Even though they had most of the map, they did not have a military because they weren't producing. They weren't putting caretakers up. They weren't putting any workers up by their factory, it's an easy mistake to make. It's really easy to make when you're worried about expansion, but not worry you're worried also about making too many builders because you don't want to focus too much of your metal on builders, you want to focus it more on military, and you end up not having enough workers near your base in order to actually produce more units while you're expanding and while you're claiming territory. It's really hard to do, but if you don't do it, then your opponent does it and ends up beating you. Because that was a lot, yeah, 4,000 metal excess, it really just was a matter of not having caretakers or builders near your main base, which, like I said, very easy mistake to make. It's kind of hard not to make that mistake. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of attention. Like, I make that mistake all the time, so I totally understand. But yeah, so that is that. Especially 400 had a metal advantage. Like, metal produced, 400 had a metal advantage, total metal production advantage, for about three or four minutes. And they never had a use advantage. Actually, they had a use disadvantage on the order of about 5,000 metal. So that's... Yeah, that's excess for you. That's why I tend to bring up excess. If anyone wonders why I bring up the excess bar all the time, it's because excess is such a big deal. It's probably... Well, it is bigger, because that's why metal used is a more important statistic than metal produced. It's like... Metal produced is basically what you could have done. Metal used is what you did do. And this is the only one that really matters in practice in terms of how many units you build. Anyway, moving on, we're going to have another match because we have more than one match on these shows. Next one's going to be Capricious versus Velthos on Ravaged. So that'll be up in... 
a couple of minutes. So stay tuned.